Hi everyone, in this presentation I will talk about my recent paper entitled Brain Multiplexes Reveal Morphological Connectional Biomarkers, Fingerprint in Late Brain Dementia States. This work has been done at Basira Lab by myself, Ines Mahroub, and supervised by Dr. Islam Kik. Alzheimer's disease is one of the most devastating neurodegenerative diseases. Typical clinical symptoms include memory loss, disorientation, language and behavioral issues. Specifically, mild cognitive impairment MTI, is considered as an intermediate stage between AD and normal control NC, where unlike AD, the memory deficits in MCI patients may remain stable for years. The progression of AD is not reversible. However, there are treatments that can help slow down progression towards AD if given in an early stage. So, early diagnosis of AD is of high value in clinical practice since it can save more time for treatment and improve the life quality of the, of the patient. That's why neuroimage analysis methods have been developed for early detection of AD at MCI stage, where patients can still benefit from adequate clinical interventions. Interestingly, the majority of these methods have extensively relied on recent state functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, or diffusion MRI. However, Analysis of functional network is usually limited by the choice of a, of a single or multiple thresholds for examining network topology, which may discard many important and discriminative brain connectivities. Besides, both structural and functional modalities are rarely acquired in unconventional clinical routine. On the other hand, many other studies have demonstrated the importance of considering cortical measures derived from the multifolded surface of the cerebral cortex for AD diagnosis. But none of them investigated the morphological connectivities between brain regions of interest or otherwise using structural T1W MRI. Besides, while some studies are based are based on a multi-layer network, several works on network-based methods developed for MCI AD classification overlook the high-order relationship between different brain connectional layers. So in this work, we introduce multi-view morphological brain networks derived from T1-weighted MRI. Each network is built using a specific cortical attribute such as cortical thickness or cortical depth. Then, based on this multi-view connectional representation of brain morphology, we further propose a novel network architectures interleaving morphological connectivity networks and their pairwise similarity networks modeling they, their high-order relationships. We use these new architectures to investigate the complex relationship between morphological views for identifying late MCI morphological connectional biomarkers, distinguishing between late MCI and AD patients. We parcelate each cortical hemisphere into different cortical regions using ATLAS. The weight of a connection between two cortical regions I and J in the network is computed as the absolute difference between the mean of cortical attribute M in RYI and its mean in RYJ. For each subject S, we construct a set of M morphological networks. For example, max principal curvature, mean cortical thickness mean circle depth. We extract relevant and high order morphological features from a set of M morphological cortical brain networks. We propose new strategies for building network architectures that capture different characteristics of how these networks interact with one another. 
the deep similarity network and the multiplex network. We first propose a deep multi-level network architecture where each level integrates the similarity networks between all possible pairs of networks in the previous level. For example, S12 is the similarity network between the two level L networks N1 and N2. SPQ is the, is the similarity network between the two level L networks NQ and MP, etc. By adding the similarity networks to our basic networks in level L, we construct level L plus 1 networks, and so on. Enforce a more structured design of networks and their similarities, we propose to use a multiplex network to model the interrelations between different layers. In a generic way, we define a brain multiplex M as a set of M intralayers or morphological networks, where between two consecutive layers NI and NG, we slide an interlayer SIG. This produces the following multiplex architecture composed of a set of interlayers and interlayers. The key ingredient of our multiplex architecture is the similarity interlayer network capturing the relationship between two networks. So, how to define the similarity network between two interlayers? In this first work, we choose a simple similarity measure where we generate the similarity network between two morphological brain networks using Pearson correlation. We extract connectional features by concatenating the weights of all connectivities in each triangular matrix. For the deep similarity network and multiplex architectures, we extract features from each network in the architecture, then concatenate them all together into a high-dimensional feature vector. Feature selection is a key step in classification tasks to both reduce the dimension of the training feature vectors and single out the most discriminative features. So, we apply infinite feature selection in a supervised manner, using the training subjects to learn how to select the top most discriminative features that significantly distinguish late MCI and AD patients. The most select selected features represent the morphological connection biomarkers that allow to distinguish between these two groups. Then, we train a support vector machine SVM classifier using leave one out cross validation strategy. Other?
for the Jeep Simulator Network Architecture, use two levels. Level 0, the multi-layer morphological network using four networks. And level 1, the multi-layer morphological network plus all the similarities between pairs of morphological networks. We compared our proposed architectures with two conventional methods. First, one-layer network architecture using four morphological networks. And second, concatenated multi-layer network architecture by concatenating all morphological networks in a large network. We evaluated our framework through varying the number of top selected features from 180 to 250 by adding 10 features at each evaluation step. We noted that overall across different selected feature numbers, the deep similarity architecture increased the classification performance in comparison with conventional methods. In fact, when using one layer morphological network, the classification accuracy only reached 63% for left hemisphere. This classification result decreased when concatenating feature extracted from all morphological networks, uh, level 0, as the classification rate was limited to 58%. However, when we further integrated the similarity network between all pairs of layers in the proposed deep similarity network architecture, level 1, the performance significantly increased for the left hemisphere to 64%. Similarly, when using the deep similarity network for the right hemisphere, the accuracy increased to 67% compared to one-layer network and concatenated one-layer network architectures. Across different selected feature numbers, the classification accuracy is highly improved when using particular brain multiplexes for both left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Specifically, Multiplex M6 achieved the best accuracy among all architecture networks, with a classification accuracy peaking at 77% for right hemisphere and 71% for left hemisphere. This shows that the proposed similarity networks allows to better discriminate between late MCI and AD subjects. We further explored our multiplex architecture and morphological networks to identify morphological connection biomarkers that discriminate between late MCI and AD patients. Since we aim it to find the most discriminative morphological connections, we chose the brain multiplex with the highest discriminative power, multiplex 6. We visualized using circular graphs the top most frequently selected morphological brain connectivities in multiplex 6. Circular graphs were plotted for the top 10, 15, and 20 discriminative features respectively. The thickness of each edge connecting a pair of ROIs represents the normalized rank of the discriminative brain connection. The most discriminative connections with the highest normalized ranks have thick edges, while those with less discriminative power have thinner edges. Blue edges denote connections belonging to a multiplex interlayer, while red edges denote connections falling into a multiplex intralayer. We plotted circular graphs for both right hemisphere and left hemisphere. Using the normalized ranks, the most discriminative connectional features for right hemisphere connected the interhinal cortex and the caudal middle frontal gyros. The interhinal cortex and temporal pole, the interhinal cortex and frontal pole, and the interhinal cortex and bank of the superior temporal sulcus. As for the left hemisphere, 
the most discriminative features connected the anterhinal cortex and the rostral middle frontal gyros. The anterhinal cortex and lingual gyros, the anterhinal cortex and postcentral gyros, and the anterhinal cortex and caudal anterior cingulate cortex, respectively. We found that 85%, respectively 65%, of most right hemisphere, respectively light hemisphere discriminative regions connected to the anterhinal cortex fingerprint late MCI ID classification. The anterhinal cortex has a major role in work on memory processing. Its importance is revealed due to its anatomical interconnection with the hippocampus, which is the major region responsible of memory formation. Anterhinal cortex role consists of generating code and schemes for new memories and storing them temporarily. Through using different cortical attributes and identifying the most of discriminative features by multiplex sex, we found that the mean sulcal depth had a high discriminative power for both hemispheres. Sulcal depth has been identified in the literature as one of the quantitative measures of cerebral cortex, representing an important morphological biomarker for AD. We see in the table below the top discriminative morphological connections in the cortex with their corresponding layers for right hemispheres, also for the left hemisphere. In our work, we found that the proposed similarity networks allow to better discriminate between late MCI and AD subjects. This was reflected by the percentages of discriminative features belonging to the similarity interlayers for each multiplex as shown in this table. In this work, we propose a novel network-based analysis frameworks for AD late MCI classification. Specifically, we propose a novel morphological network architectures, namely deep similarity networks and multiplex networks, to better explore cortical morphological connectivities. These architectures allow to identify morphological connection biomarkers for late MCI and D classification. The anterhinal cortex was detected as top potential biomarker for AD and MCI, which is in line with the state of the art on dementia. In our future work, we will integrate longitudinal morphological brain networks into our multiplex architecture to improve our classification results. Besides, we will use advanced methods for defining morphological and similarity networks. We will also consider other multimodal brain network, such as resting state functional networks and diffusion structural networks to build an integral connectional brain multiplex. Thank you for your attention. For more, please visit us at basira-lab.com and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and cite our work. Thank you.